Thank you. Um, and thank you very, very much, Gretna, uh, Teresa, Anna, and all the others that have helped organize this. If there was one thing I'd like to do on Earth Day, it's clearly this. So you come as uh, very much the icing on the, on the topping of the cake here. Thank you very much for asking me. And thank you to everybody that has dialed in. And I want to recognize, first of all, that these are extraordinary times and very difficult times. And I'm sure that some of those who are on the dial-in are particularly affected one way or the other by this terrible disease and the pandemic. So my heart goes out to everyone that is uh, suffering right now. The, the first point that I'd like to make is that even though we're here to talk about environment, I want to say that the first response to COVID-19 has to be a medical one. And so that's obviously clear. And I think everyone on this call joins the Secretary General in celebrating and in uh, uh, paying tribute to health workers, to community workers, to those who deal with outreach, uh, elder care, et cetera, et cetera, in our communities dealing with, um, with this immediate medical dimension of, of this crisis. I think that it, if we'd spoken a year ago, and someone were to say, is it possible that you lock down the entire humanity, more or less give and take, that all children stop going to school? Very few people would have thought that that would be even possible. And yet here we are today. And so understanding therefore that what COVID-19 has done is that a fundamental shift in our understanding. Um, and, it, and I think we will find a world in the post-pandemic setting that will be forever altered. And so we who work on environment need to think about what are we doing in the now, in the middle of the pandemic, and what are we gonna do, be doing in the after? And there's not a more fitting time than to do this today with the next generation, with those that are putting their shoulder to the wheel on activism, with those that are questioning and, and forcing the hand of politicians um, towards action. So I really thank you for this. Now, the first message that I have is that, and you may have seen me say so in the media, COVID is, does not, we must not celebrate COVID and as a silver lining to environment. Yes, I know that City Air in New Delhi and Mexico and Cairo, et cetera, is amazingly clean. And yes, I know that there are penguins on the streets of, of, of um, of Cape Town, and yes, and goats and, and, and dolphins and what have you in various waterways. Um, so, the, but the point here is that unless we take this as a lesson for how we can shift how humanity in the response to COVID decided to take action because our back was literally against the wall, unless we take that commitment into a new green world, with investments that are sustainable, we will have lost an opportunity. And certainly this eight weeks of halt, whilst we have local air, air, air pollution reduced, it will in no way have an impact of any significant way, shape or form on climate change. Only systemic shifts will have that. So that's the first message. But the second message that I say is, if we are now looking at, since we are now looking at this terrible, terrible emergency, the first, as, as, as those who deal with environment, an early action clearly needs to be, we've had a lot of campaigns on plastic, we've had a lot of campaigns on chemicals, we've had a lot of work done on waste management. And we saw in Wuhan, for example, that the medical sector during the height of the pandemic went from about 240 tons a day um, of, of, of waste, uh, sorry, went from about 40 tons a day of waste to 240, so a six-fold increase nearly. So we need to think about this amount of medical waste and it'll be plastic and it'll be toxic and it'll be highly infectious, et cetera, et cetera. And make sure that in those places, and there are many, that this doesn't end up in the water streams, that, that, that even if they do not have incineration, that it gets packaged and managed appropriately in accord with the Basel Convention guidelines. So medical waste, a big thing, that clearly hasn't been considered but as environmental uh, professionals, we need to be mindful of. And I'm very pleased that my colleagues in the Basel um, Convention Secretariat have gotten very active and so on. I'll stop that part now, but clearly the waste I mentioned too. 
these the environmental response that we need to give to uh, COVID is one that we need to consider. And here, I want to draw your attention to the UNEP report uh, called Frontiers, uh, which is a report that comes out that sort of looks into the horizon and says, okay, we know what we have today, but what are the new things that we UNEP, what's our responsibility to say to the world, look, this thing is coming our way. We are, we are, we are telling you that it's a, a thing we need to be mindful of. Frontiers report comes out every two years at the UNEP. And the last Frontiers, well, uh, so the 2016 Frontiers report speaks to zoonosis. Zoonosis are essentially diseases that jump, as we know, from the animal world, zoological world, we must lost zoonosis, to human beings. To, and, and often through an, an intermediary, uh, it could be a bat or a flea or a rat or what have you. Um, and these zoonoses, we said in 2016, planetary health and ecosystem health on one side and human health, you can't think of these separate. You gotta be sound in your management of ecosystems. You can't erode forests and natural systems. You can't trade um, illegally and have illegal wet markets that do not have sanitary conditions. This will be a petri dish for disaster. You cannot bring diseases together that are supposed to live in diverse and dispersed ecosystems. So the takeaway in the post-COVID setting is clearly get an ambitious biodiversity framework in the post-2020 framework for, for COP15. Make sure that people adhere to and countries adhere to their CITES commitments. Deal with and then implement the CMS, the Convention for Migratory Species Agreements. It is around biodiversity and is around safeguarding nature. So that's sort of a big piece and, and understand that planetary health and human health are connected. And the third piece clearly deals with, we're gonna see massive amount of stimulus packages, uh, monies being shot into the economy for a very good reason. There's already a big shot of injection of cash that has already happened. And you will have heard the secretary general say, you know, let that money go to the poorest, protect the poorest in terms of social protection. And it's time now to show social, uh, to show international solidarity. Because if you have one COVID case, you have everybody having a COVID case. So it is just like smallpox, it needs a global mobilization. And so on the, on the stimulus, yes, the first part of the stimulus will always be about getting money into people's pockets, people and food into people's mouths. You can't green that stimulus. Just do it and push it out there. Make sure you protect the poorest. But the second stimulus package and the third wave tend to be infrastructure to give people jobs, to build stuff, to fix stuff. Look at the green opportunities in that. Leapfrog into clean. You don't have to go through a polluting age. Let's find a way of leapfrogging into green and clean. And so that part of building back better the green stimulus my third point is key and and one that we're put, pushing a, a lot of, of emphasis putting a lot of emphasis on and here i'd say that the um that the major group on children and youth you you have been unfairly uh, carrying a big load on climate to get the world to understand the importance of action on climate change. And you have been phenomenal in so doing. We need you again, because it needs everybody at the, at the push, putting their shoulder to the wheel. And we need you to also speak up on, yes, of course, the waste. Yes, of course, the zoonosis and the planetary health and human health, and therefore an, uh, an ambitious uh, agreement at COP15. And yes, absolutely building back better, building back green, leapfrogging to green. And you have a brilliant voice and a great leader, a set of leaders. Uh, and I am very optimistic that with you, um, we can land this. So I don't want to take too much time because I'm much more interested in the dialogue. So with that then, Iratna, let me hand it back to you if I may, and then we can have an interactive dialogue. Thank you.